My name is Wade McNeil. I'm Andrew Gordon McPherson, but some people know me as Ango. We are composers that just finished working on the new Far Cry 5 game, and we're here today to talk about how we use Serato in that game. We both come from completely different musical backgrounds. Um, I put out a bunch of records uh, with the band Alex on Fire, band Gallows, band Black Lungs, all very kind of heavy records that are rooted in kind of post-hardcore and punk. And then Andrew is on the complete other side of the spectrum. Yeah, mainly producing electronic R&B pop records over the years uh, under the name Ango, uh, you know, Nouveau Palais. Uh, you know, I've been trying to make amazing and interesting music. And about a year ago, we both worked on a film together, Goon, Last of the Enforcers, and uh, kind of discovered this, you know, mutual love, a lot of the same art and culture and you know we grew up skateboarding listening to the same records and um, begun working on music together. Yeah so even though our you know our musical paths were so far apart we kind of met on this one project and you know that that collision of, of uh, you know different styles and influences has been the thing that has like propelled us into making all kinds of uh, soundtrack work for TV film and now games like Far Cry. Uh, so for the new Far Cry game, we did a bunch of really retro first wave video game music for the main game, for the arcade mode. But uh, where Serato came in to what we were working on is uh, a game just came out, a Far Cry DLC called Hours of Darkness. And that is a Vietnam War game. And with a really bleak kind of almost horror film soundtrack, we found we could do some really, really interesting things with Sample. And I think we began using it probably in a way that a lot of people haven't thought about using it. For us, our approach to the Hours of Darkness game was like, it had to be very psychological and, uh, you know, dark and anxious. And, um, but we also knew that we needed to incorporate, uh, you know, elements of traditional Vietnamese music and, you know, modern sort of war films, uh, as well as, you know, kind of ambient and dark and drone and noise music. And so uh, we came to Serato as a tool for just creating those textures and really layering stuff and really mangling it in a way that we couldn't do with other software. And I think that's a, that's a huge part of creating music for video games. It's like really, really layered, really, really dense songs. And that's just the way the, the games play out and the way the music unfolds as the levels um, like go on in time. Uh, so it can be something as simple as like a really simple drone and then obviously when you're in like this combat mode of the game then it gets really really chaotic and there's a ton of things happening but that's where kind of the Serato sample stuff came in is that creating that that first drone. And then you know taking other instruments like guitars and basses, synthesizers and you know making these really harmonically dense uh, tones that we could create as our own synths and sounds that you haven't heard before but that you feel. I think one of the most surprising things uh, about using Sample for us was, you know, say I'm creating like a piece on guitar and I've got some really vibey, uh, like delayed out, soaked in reverb, kind of dreamy thing. Um, and then by running it through Sample and, you know, slowing it down to within an inch of its life, um, it would be really surprising what the end result would be. And so something that was maybe really melodic and nice um, slowed down and then even when we started messing with the pitch, uh, it made it take on a really, like a completely new life. And, um, and that even in itself was something that inspired more music for the game. So, you know, having one melody and then messing with it uh, in the software would almost inform like the next thing we do. And there's lots of, you know, there's lots of different modes of, you know, pitch shifting and time shifting that have been around for ages and, you know, we've used all of them, but I, I've never heard anything like Serato Sample for really mangling and just, just putting something into a, into a spectrum of the frequencies and the timing that, like, it doesn't belong and it creates something new, but it's also in the world of the palette of the, of the soundtrack or the piece. And so for us, you know, we've run everything through this. We've, we've 
done stacks of guitars, uh, you know, to create one big mega guitar and, you know, at all different pitches. We've run polyphonic synths through it, monophonic synths through it, and we used a bunch of traditional Vietnamese instruments and recordings uh, and really mangled them in sample in a way that, uh, you know, we wouldn't have achieved the same results if we didn't have that tool. So on Far Cry Hours of Darkness, uh, we had the challenge of trying to marry, you know, 60s psych music, war film music, and traditional Vietnamese music. And one of the first things we did was uh, go into the studio with this amazing uh, Vietnamese instrumentalist named uh, Kim Nguyen Lee. And she interpreted a bunch of our cues and we kind of jammed with her a bunch and would collect a bunch of samples. And when we got back to the studio and we needed to, you know, create that inner anxious, terrifying world, uh, for the, the backdrops of, of uh, the game. One of the sort of techniques that we did to start to, to sort through this stuff was taking these big chunks of performance and not even for the cues we necessarily recorded her for, but start manipulating them and pulling out textures from those instruments that so maybe they don't s sound exactly as they would sound in the studio, but trying to create something new. So this is, uh, this is an instrument called the Dantran, which is kind of like a harp that lays flat and she plays with both hands. So this was a, a pass that she had done for one of our cues. So you can, you can see that it's a very rich instrument, but so the first type of thing we would do is like drop it in, in sample and uh, you know, kind of sc scroll through things, maybe like start slowing it down. Maybe pitch it down. Um, so this is just this is just running in Serato sample in Ableton. I've got it going into an EQ, a little compressor, an auto filter, a reverb. You know, and we're just trying to find, you know. Si sound designy elements that feel like what we're trying to get the player to feel like uh, in that situation and create something new. Um, and these are, you know, we would make dozens of these and then write music on top of them. You know, there's a little overdrive, you know. Once you kind of find some stuff that you like, we would start a cue with, you know, something in this vein and start writing on top of it to, to, to flush out the idea. So a little sub bass. Uh, this is just a sine bass with some distortion and another filter. Um, we got an extra little choir there for some more texture, but it's all just kind of droning in the same harmonic territory. This is a real simple cue, but it starts to paint this picture of, you know, being alone in the jungle and there's conflict all around you and there's, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully gets you on edge and gets you in the zone to like do your mission. And also it comes from a place of by using and sample and manipulating the hell out of it. You know, when we played that original piece of the music, it's really fast and all over the place and like tons of notes super busy and you know that really moody drone is the end result of it so using sample like i think it really inspired us to just go in in a lot of different directions where we may not have originally gone with the score because it can so dramatically change what you're working on a big challenge in writing music for games is keeping the player focused but not boring them and and also the music is often has to be dynamic to what the action in the scene is. So, you know, sometimes you're writing what can feel like two or three songs all happening simultaneously in which the game kind of mixes between what level of intensity you're at. So, you know, when we're trying to create this base level of uh, feel, Serato Sample was a really like interesting tool for us to take all of the colors that we were kind of going to be painting with for the score and then just create this uh, these like new lush pools that can sit at the bottom of everything and that can inspire all this other harmonic stuff to happen in the in the more intense and more direct uh, parts of the score well it's it's wild man I think when Andrew showed me the uh, after he was out here in LA and, and you know getting the software 
I think you, you put in like a Michael Jackson song and like something like so bright and melodic and then you slowed it down to a point where it sounded like Black Sabbath. <laughs> like, this is pretty mind blowing what this can do. Well, yeah, Cause there, there used to be the Paul stretch and I mean, I remember when, like on YouTube and stuff, you have those videos of Bieber stre like slowed down 8,000% and suddenly it sounds like Sigur Ross or something. And, but that thing was always this standalone app that like you had to bounce it out and bring it in and it wasn't intuitive at all, but with like, with sample, you actually manipulate it in a way like you would a synth. You've got ADSRs there, you've got cue points. If you're used to DJing, all that, all that stuff is there. So for me, like just to have it right in, in Ableton and be like, I need, I need something where I can like turn this sound into something else. It's like, that's one of my go-to, go-to things.